Hey guys, uh, so this is going to be a bit of an unusual kind of video today. Uh, I actually had not planned to uh, make this into a video. Um, basically, I just the, the video in question here, I just had a long rebuttal for it, and it was originally just going to be a comment that I was just going to leave there and not really give it much thought um, once I'd done it. But uh, once I'd actually finished writing it, I put it through a word count, and it ended up being like over two and a half thousand words and I thought that is too long for a comment I'm gonna have to make a video I think so apologies you know for people uh, who maybe are here for a sort of more orthodox kind of content here this is uh, just something that I want to do really just basically because I have a lot to say about this particular video I'm gonna try and attempt to try and make this as engaging and entertaining as possible but it if this is just you know, not the sort of thing you're used to or not the kind of content uh, you're on this channel for or have subscribed to the channel for or whatever, uh, I do apologise for that. This is basically more just a sort of personal thing that I just wanted to get off my chest. But yeah, basically I, I am just going to read basically what I wrote in the comment uh, in response uh, to the video in question. Now unfortunately I was not able to download the video in question. Uh, so basically what I've done is I've just recorded the audio for it um, I'm going to put a link in the description uh, to it, just so you can check it for yourself. Um, but yeah, basically I'm just going to play audio from the video uh, the whole time. Uh, apologies if that's not of particularly good quality. Uh, but I did manage to download the, the actual Nostalgia Critic review that this video is about, so I'll be able to play clips of that uh, while I'm playing the audio from the uh, actual video in question, which is basically just all Miss Anthropony actually does in his video anyway, so you know it's not much of a loss really. but. Uh, yeah, it's not completely ideal. So anyway, with that uh, introduction out of the way, let's begin. So, this video, Doug Walker's Nostalgia Critic 10th Anniversary Special. How can one possibly describe how horrendously awful it is? So, I'm gonna try to keep this brief. I should probably start by saying that I do not like Doug Walker. He is not a good reviewer. The vast majority of his content is based around comedy, and his brand of humor really isn't that creative or unique. It's quite repetitive, and looking back at his early work, it certainly didn't age very well. Even putting that aside, he's a horrible film analyzer. In all of his reviews I've seen, he's come across as uninformed, unfocused, hypocritical, or some combination of the three. And it's really gotten worse with each passing year. Okay, well this statement comes across as a little bit vague, and I get that, you know, it's an opening statement, so it kind of needs to be sort of general. But there is a difference, I think, between making a lot of general statements and actually getting people to understand what exactly it is you're talking about here. Um, general statements about his style of reviewing, his style of his comedy, and just how he comes across, um, you know, that's all fine. But you don't even really give any examples of what you're talking about here. Uh, you, you basically just are saying he's bad and leaving it at that, really. It, it, if you can't, like, explain or give reasoning as to exactly what it is you're talking about, there, there isn't really even much point bringing it up. You even dismiss an entire video series without any reasoning at all. I mean, that, that is beyond the, just, just sort of generalising a general sort of statement. It's, it's, it's utterly pointless almost to be that vague and that general about something as big as that. But hey, you know, never mind. Uh, this is just about this one specific review, which obviously you are going to talk about in this uh, video in a bit more detail. Uh, so, you know, as a video as overall, it's not a massive uh, derailing of the actual video itself. I just sort of feel like you'd be better off talking about your own personal thoughts on Norm of the North, you know, assuming you've seen it, uh, rather than just saying you don't like the person reviewing it. It kind of opens you up to a lot of easy backlash if you open up by saying that you don't like the person reviewing it, because it sort of begs the question, well, why are you even watching this review? But enough about that, this is going to focus on his review on Norm of the North, which he dedicated his 10 year anniversary to. The first thing that I want to say is that it just feels like a missed opportunity. I mean, I understand wanting to do a review of Norm of the North, but why make it the focus of your 10 year anniversary? There's nothing really special about it. What's special about it is that he's gotten a ton of requests to review it. 
In fact, why didn't he review the original Transformers movie? It was the first video that he ever made, so it would have had some kind of poetic feel to it. Not to mention that he just predicted Transformers fought flawlessly. There's a lot of potential behind this. He could have made a review about the good old days of seeing Transformers for the first time. Comparing it to later day Transformers, talking about the passage of time, how 10 years of doing this has had an effect on him. Relieving his nostalgia, which you think he would do considering his name is Nostalgia Critic. Well, first of all, I'm pretty sure he liked the first Transformers, so it probably wouldn't have worked as a Nostalgia Critic review. Uh, I know he has reviewed movies in the past that he liked, but generally speaking, he doesn't tend to do that. Uh, he tends to only do it in very special circumstances where he feels like he actually does genuinely have a lot of jokes or a lot of things to say about uh, the actual film. Uh, if the original Transformers did not fall into that category, it probably wouldn't have made for a good review. Um, also, like you said, he actually did a Transformers video only a couple of weeks ago. It probably wouldn't have been a good idea to do another one so soon. As for the old reliving the old days and talking about how the reviews used to be or how it got started or anything, he kind of already did that in his Christmas with the Cranks review, uh, as well as uh, a number of other videos he did uh, around the same time that this review came out, uh, namely the top five best Nostalgia Critic episodes, Nostalgia Critic the 10-year talk, and 10 years of Nostalgia Critic. Um, so if that's the sort of thing you were looking for in uh, this review, I suggest you go and watch them. I'll tell you what, I'll even put a link in the description to them. Doug just pasted them into the script without putting more thinking into them, how they could be more effective, more funny, how they could better fit into the review without breaking up the flow of the pacing. Now this is something that's kind of difficult for me to respond to since, again, you fail to give any examples of what you're talking about. I assume you're talking about the joke you are playing while you are saying this, namely the bit where Norm is saying he's not going to do something and then he immediately does it, and uh, the nostalgia critic makes the point that you could just replace it with he did it. Okay, well, what was it about that joke that could or needed to be better? I thought it worked fine. It gets the point across that it was a very abrupt transition. Even if Doug is somehow trying harder than he actually is, the jokes are just too predictable. It's easy to tell which brands of humor and what jokes he's going for, even as someone who has loosely seen footage of this movie. This makes the punchlines feel like white noise, and a lot of the other jokes are just something that he says randomly, and he thinks that saying it in a shrill screeching voice while putting on a dick make it funny, which it does not. This again has the problem of being a lot of general statements without examples. You said at the start of the video you wanted to keep the video short, even though it ended up being over 10 minutes, but you know, whatever. So I get why you may have wanted to be more general about what you were saying, but if you were going to do that, you still need to give at least one example of what you're talking about and explain why, in this case, the humour is predictable. But I'll give you the benefit of the doubt and assume you're talking about the clips you are playing when you say this. What's predictable about the no joke? What makes it easy to tell the type of humour it is? Also, you've only seen some loose footage of the film? I'm not sure why you bring that up here, by the way. Are you really in any position to criticise a review of a film you yourself have not seen? You could talk about the comedy, but in terms of breaking down the film and talking about what does or doesn't work, you're not going to be able to talk about that. So, can you really say with any kind of confidence if it's a good review or not? As for the talking in a shrill voice and making a face, that's called comedic timing. It's hardly a new thing that only he has ever done. It's a common, classic, tried and tested method of getting a quick, cheap laugh. Another problem with the episode is the sketches, where instead of cutting away for a few seconds to make a joke revolving around the movie, he completely derails the entire video by dedicating entire minutes to his personal comedic writing. Well, I feel he does cut away for a few seconds to talk about the film many times during the review, but whatever. Yes, he does these skits during the review that have less to do with the movie and connect more to his own style of comedy. But why shouldn't he be allowed to do that? It's his review, isn't it? Sometimes giving the review more of a storyline and recurring gags and characters helps to give the review more of a unique style. It helps make it seem like you're watching an episode of a show rather than just a random review. I can understand the opening where he pretends to be Aang. He's not being Aang. I really don't understand why you'd think that that's what he was doing, since he looks nothing like him. When did Aang ever wear a Kizia? He has a bald head. Is Aang the only person in the world with a bald head? But there's no tattoo. Seriously, how is he being Aang? But the other sketches in this video are horrendous. At one point he starts calling out Bill, and then it just drags on and on and on about how he seems to have disappeared. And the punchline is that Bill just shows up. 
and they do a stupid dance. What really bothers me about this sketch is that it literally comes out of nowhere and it has no connection with the rest of the video at all, or even the review of the movie itself. It's only there because Doug thought it would be funny, and that's not good for a movie review of any kind. The jokes have to be built around the movie itself, not your shitty demo reel throwaway gags. Okay, well at least this time you're giving an example of what you're talking about. I've already talked about why I feel it's okay that it doesn't connect much with the movie. So your point about how it has to connect with the movie, I just don't agree with. So let's talk about what happens in the skit. First, the skit is less than a minute long, so I'm not sure why you'd think it goes on too long. Of course it's there because Doug thought it would be funny. It's a comedic review, how is that a bad thing? Bill showing up at the end and them doing a dance is a form of absurdist comedy, which again is a very common style of comedy and has been proven to work many times in the past. You may not feel it works here, and that's fine, but the style of comedy it is, is something that's been proven to work. And the second sketch that he does is that of the Talent Replacer 9000. It may be related to the film review, but considering how badly paced and how irrelevant it feels, I'm just gonna label it as another one of his failed sketches. They don't even say anything funny, they just say exactly what you think they're going to say, which again ruins the punchline that they're going for. And they seem to think that quoting South Park gives the joke more credibility when it really doesn't. This skit is more about him making a point about the uncreative writing that the film has, as well as making a general point about why so many films do this. The comedy is more in the presentation of it rather than what is specifically being said. I'm not sure how that ruins the punchline, and I didn't notice a quote from South Park, so I can't really comment on that. But if you really genuinely felt the South Park line didn't work, it might have been worth explaining why. This problem is unfortunately not exclusive to this episode. After Doug brought back the Nostalgia Critic, we've been getting more and more jokes like this, where Doug detracts from the review to ham-fist his personal shitty comedic writing into his audience's face, where he spends too much time making sketches and cutaways and losing focus on the review. It always ends up being poorly paced, and it just feels like Doug is coming up with excuses to make the video longer than it should be. The result is that they end up overstaying their welcome, and they become annoying and boring. Okay, a lot of what you talk about here I've already covered, about how they don't connect to the film and how they go on for far too long. I'm not sure why you're fast-forwarding through the clip you're playing. The skit is short enough already. Like you said, it's only two minutes long to begin with. It's hardly Ben Hur. I don't really see how a skit as short as two minutes can overstay its welcome. Again, it would have helped to have given an actual example here. And what's weird is that that's kind of what you're trying to do here with the skit you are playing here. But while you are talking about how long the skit goes on for, in trying to make the point that it lasts longer than it needs to, what do you do? You fast forward through it and it ends up being much shorter than it was in the review. That's counterproductive to the point you are trying to make. I don't really agree with your point that a skit as short as two minutes could actually end up being too long, but you could have made a more convincing argument if you played the skit at normal speed and pointed out where, in the skit, it could have ended and didn't. Take this for example. Yeah, he wasn't asked, they weren't talking about it, he just kind of randomly starts doing it. It just comes right the hell out of nowhere and suddenly, we're in a musical! It's like if in the middle of this review, I suddenly started dancing. Who's the building? And several minutes after that... It's like Groundhog Day, except instead of watching Bill Murray, we're watching Rob Schneider! Instead of watching Bill Murray, we're watching Rob Schneider! No! It's like if in the middle of this review, I suddenly started dancing. Okay, good. You're giving us an example of what he's talking about. That's at least a step in the right direction. I don't understand why you play the clip of him and Bill dancing, but the basic idea with that is it's a brick joke. You think he's going to get up and start dancing. He doesn't, and for a while you're a bit confused. Then by the time he does get up and start dancing, it's part of another joke and you've basically forgotten about the joke from before. And the humour comes from the fact that the punchline is part of a separate joke. Again, it's called a brick joke, look it up. Once again, if you don't think it works as a gag, I guess that's up to you. But it is a style of humour that's been proven to work. Something that I noticed the second time watching this is how very little Doug actually analyses the plot of the movie itself. 
and that mostly stems from how he's just stuck in the first 25 minutes of the movie. I mean, nearly halfway through this video, he's still in the first act of the film. And considering that the last four minutes is dedicated to recap and a charity shoutout, it's basically telling me that he spends the majority of the review making jokes about one portion of the film which gives him very little time left. I'm not sure why you would think he doesn't analyze the film that much. What are these statements if it's not analyzing the film? Let's play a game, I'm sure you're already playing it at home. <clears throat> what runaway first draft character from another movie was this? Okay, let's see, Norm is obviously the lion from Madagascar who doesn't fit in. Oh, and the annoying testicles! <laughs> Come on, you know the annoying testicles, they're everywhere! How does he have this magical power? Movie! I just realized, you know how there's always a bad Asylum knockoff film every single time an animated flick comes out? Like, every animated flick? Norm of the North doesn't have one. That's how bad it is. It's its own Asylum knockoff! Something else you'll notice is that the camera is always spinning in this movie. It's like the camera operator is in constant orbit around whatever piece of shit is being photographed. I feel like I'm on a dizzying ride. Whoa! Oh no, that's... Not what I wanted to be. I thought you didn't want to be a scary animal, you know, so you can get along and be peaceful with people. To these intruders. They've never done anything for us except come to our land uninvited. Motivation, you drunk again? And those are just from the first 15 minutes or so of the film. As for him focusing more on the first act than the rest of the film, why shouldn't he be allowed to do that if he naturally has more to say about that part of the film? Just because he's reviewing the film in order doesn't mean the review has to be spread evenly across the entire film. As a matter of fact, he doesn't even analyze the first act that he spends all of his time on. He honestly had to make a pointless bill sketch and fill the first 14 minutes telling ineffective jokes. Keep in mind, reviewing the film is only half of his objective. The other is to make jokes. As for the idea he's not reviewing the film, well, I've just been over that. Other reviews of this movie that I've seen from other YouTubers. Black Critic Guy, Selfbex, Chris Stuckman, Electric Dragon 505, Cinematic Excrement Smeghead. All of them managed to properly analyze the plot, the characters, and the story when Doug himself couldn't. And they did it with less time. Okay, what was it about those reviews that meant they worked as reviews while Doug's didn't? Again, this is where examples of specific things that were said in the videos in question would really help. Is your issue just that Doug's review is different from the ones you list, and talk about different aspects of the film? Because if anything, that's a good thing! Since there are already a bunch of reviews out there, it's clearly important that this one just not cover the same ground as the rest of them. It's interesting you mention Chris Stuckman's review in particular since his style of reviewing is as far away from Doug's as it's really possible to be. He always gives more of a basic overview of the tone and feel of the film, sometimes pinpointing certain characters or themes that really go into the core of what does or doesn't make the film work. In the case of his Norm of the North review, he focuses a lot on the general kind of boring feel to the film, the low quality of the animation, and how a lot of kids in his screen were not enjoying it. All good points, but also very general points. And that's not a knock against Chris. I get that that's his style. My point is that even if you like Chris's review, you can't tell me he does a better job than Doug of explaining why the film is bad when he doesn't go into anything like as much detail. So I don't really know what the length of those videos has to do with anything. But you're still a reviewer, and as such, you can't just throw your analysis on the film out like that completely. Well, I've already been over this. Basically, he does analyze it, and I don't really understand why he would think he doesn't. And it's really, really, really cringy the way that Doug just focuses on the pissing lemmings. In fact, he focuses on them more than the film itself. He says that the scene is only 30 seconds long, and he plays it on loop for over a minute. For God's sake, the audio even plays during the transition to the commercial card, and it continues to play when we come back from the commercial. If he really thinks that no one would want to listen to this, why is he forcing us to listen to it? It's just a disgusting sound, and he doesn't do anything or add anything to make it funny or endearing. He just shows us the scene and lets it sit there like an old man waiting to get his flu shot. And he does this again almost immediately after, only this time he holds onto that stupid face while making us listen to the pissing audio. And let me tell you, that image and that sound should never be experienced together by any mortal man. 
Well, I guess I shouldn't be too surprised that you didn't get this, since you feel the best way to illustrate a scene going on too long is to fast forward through it. Seriously, that's completely backwards. Basically, everything you talk about here, the horrible sounds, how long it goes on for, bringing it back a minute or so later, it's still going on after the ad break, all that stuff... That's a joke! The best way to emphasise how long something goes on for, or how unpleasant that scene is, is to exaggerate it. The scene probably seemed to him like it went on for way longer than 30 seconds, so he stretches it out longer than it actually went on for to recreate that feeling for us. It helps to get the point across about how long and how unpleasant the scene is. As for bringing the joke back a minute or so later, the reason he does that is because that's what the film did. I'm also not sure what you didn't like about his face. It looks fine to me. And then he has to repeat this joke during the part where the lemmings flatulate. Granted that he doesn't really focus too much on this one, but it's still a rendition of a joke that wasn't funny the first time, and this is his third time doing it. It's what's known as a recurring gag. Again, if it doesn't work for you, that's fine. But it's a method of comedy that's been proven to work. But all of that just leads up to the worst thing of this 10 year anniversary special. It feels nothing at all like a 10th anniversary special. There's no scene where Doug reflects on his life since becoming Nostalgia Critic, no reference to his earlier days of the show. They just briefly stick the words 10 years on the title sequence, and that's it. Wow. Really? That was the worst thing about it? The worst thing the review does is just not mention he's been reviewing for 10 years? I can't imagine you really felt that bad about the review if you really think something that trivial is actually the worst thing about it. Well, anyway, this is something else I've already been over. He made a few other videos to look back over the last 10 years. But even ignoring that, does it say 10th anniversary special in the video's title? Does it say that at the start of the video? Okay, it says 10 years, but it doesn't say anniversary special. Do they say it's an anniversary special anywhere in the video? Was there anything about it being an anniversary special in the build-up to the review being posted? No, there's nothing anywhere about this being an anniversary special. I'm not really sure where you've got that from. It says 10 years in the video, but that's just to acknowledge that this happens to have been the video that coincides with him doing this for 10 years. Now, maybe your point is that there should have been an anniversary special, and the fact that there isn't one is the issue here. That's kind of a petty thing to be complaining about, much less feel like it's the worst thing about the review, i.e. something it doesn't do. It's on the same level as a child opening up a PS4 on Christmas Day and crying because it doesn't have Fallout 4 with it. You know what? This was just sad. Not only was this episode of Nostalgia Critic void of humor and a horribly paced review, not to mention that he barely reviews the movie on any level, but it doesn't even succeed as an anniversary special. There's nothing special about it in any way. It's just like every other modern episode of Nostalgia Critic, and they briefly plaster 10-year anniversary on it. More stuff I've already covered. But one thing I do agree with, yes, this is like every other Nostalgia Critic episode. I'm pretty sure that was the idea. I don't see what's wrong with that. For what it's worth, I do feel bad for Tamara and Malcolm. Knowing that they have to work with Doug Walker's repetitive shtick must be really tiring on them. Even in this episode, they look and act like they're just completely tired of his shit. In all of their appearances, they really do look like they're trying their best to entertain the audience, but the material that Doug provides for them just gives them very little to work with. I've seen many of the behind-the-scenes videos, and those certainly suggest that they are really enjoying what they are doing. If they look tired or bored or disinterested during this or any other review, that's only because Doug's asked them to act like that. Since, you know, that's their job. But yes, maybe it is tiring and grading at times. But isn't any job? Just because you personally might not enjoy the reviews they are part of, that doesn't mean they have a bad job. They are not big name actors in blockbuster movies that millions of people will see, and therefore there isn't any real chance of their performance on the movie being bad damaging their careers in some way. They are small time actors looking for whatever work they can, and what they are in is a successful internet show with a large audience, and new episodes every two weeks. Assuming they are paid well? What the heck is it about their situation that makes you feel sorry for them? Whatever Nicole is doing right now, I'm pretty sure that she's doing a lot better than Doug, which is good for her because in my case, she really dodged a bullet when she left the show. I don't know who Nicole is, but I'll assume you're talking about Rachel since that's the person on screen during this part. I have no idea how well she's doing, but if she's doing better than Doug, she must be rolling in the cash. 
because he's doing phenomenally well right now. This is seriously one of the worst episodes of the Nostalgia Critic by far, and I mean that on an objective level. It's badly paced, the humor is ineffective, it doesn't properly break down the film it's focusing on, and for a 10 year anniversary, it feels nothing at all like a special anniversary episode. More stuff I've already covered, but I don't really see how any of those things are objective. Certainly humor, by its very nature, is subjective. And yet Dogwalker's fans are just eating it up and praising it regardless. But these days they'll praise just about any mundane thing that Dogwalker does for no other reason than just he's Dogwalker and he can do no wrong. That's certainly not true. I've seen a lot of backlash to some of the things he's done over the years. Did you see the top 11 fuck up videos he's done? In fact, sometimes it's a bit ridiculous the things people criticise. When he first started filming his reviews in that studio, people moaned about the colour of the wall behind him. Some people seem to think a blank white wall was distracting. I'm not kidding you, that's something people actually said. So, no, the idea that some people feel like Doug can do no wrong is simply untrue. Well, there you go guys. It was a lot longer than uh, I was expecting it to be, but... Uh... There we go, that's uh, pretty much everything I wanted to get off my chest. Um, so, uh, uh, apologies that this is a rather unorthodox uh, type of video. I'll, I'll have something more sort of normal out uh, hopefully uh, next week. So, see you guys around. Bye.